Hey, what's going on? If you have a small business, you know, if you're a remodeler or a home builder or you have an accounting practice, you're an insurance company, I want to talk to you about generating leads using digital marketing. And uh, in particular, I'm just going to hit in on 2021. How is it that you can tap into the best versions of advertising? I'm just going to talk through some strategies. You know, if you're listening to this on the podcast, boy, I'd love it if you'd like and subs or if you'd rate us. Um, trying to get this thing going i've realized I've, I've got almost two million views on youtube and i'm like God, people are sitting there watching me talk this whole time i'm going to put this on itunes no more screwing around i listened to jordan peterson the other day he's like man when i brought these in it used to be that these academic conversations were something that you could only have in academia but here i find out that these conversations can be brought to the internet and, and he was talking about just these deep rigorous um, intense conversations about meaning and, and important things um, could be something that the average Joe would want to listen to. So he, he's like, I put them onto YouTube. And when we put them onto YouTube, all of a sudden, he started to have a ton of momentum. And then he's like, but then I really cracked the code when I got into audio, when I got into podcasts, because you can do whatever you want while you listen to a podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> Rob sitting here going, people watch my ugly mug on YouTube. I am not, like, I'm just I'm pretty, I'm overweight, good old gray hair like people are sitting here people you guys watch on average like nine minutes of, of a 20 minute video and that's like 30 percent of you get off right away and the rest of you watch the whole thing i'm like gosh i gotta get these on on itunes so if you haven't checked this out we got it on google and itunes podcast too if you're listening to it on the podcast i need your help to like and 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 uh it, that is if you actually like it and then if you're on youtube man like and subscribe we're talking about business ownership we're talking about entrepreneurship we're talking about all this stuff um and one of the things that I've just come to realize with digital marketing is that there's so many options out there. And I'm just going to break down a couple things. I want to help you add some value so you know how to think. And I'm telling you, if you have an old, ugly website with bad messaging that doesn't connect with people, that's not like a, an actual sales tool, give me a call. We can design a new website for you. We will help you just like clarify and bring clarity and get rid of the 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 non-clear language, I just keep using the word clear, but we will help a website actually convert and send trust signals so that people understand who you are, they see you as a, an, as somebody that they can trust and they'll take a step with you, we can do that. We can set up Google ads and remarketing ads, so we're gonna talk a little bit about this lead generation with digital. We can just take your current website and set up excellent advertising for you. We can just do that as a one-time setup or we can manage it for you and we can help fill your sales funnel. So just know, um, love to take your money, we work with you. And when you work with us, we'll be trustworthy competent, enjoyable, and rigorous. When we work with people, we're going to treat you like your family. And that's a good thing. My family's good. So um, anyways, let's just talk about the core of digital marketing right now. You got to have a website that actually converts. You have to have a website that talks to the, the problems that your core customer is facing. And you want to make sure that you have other people saying that you've actually solved this problem for them. You want great customer reviews, customer testimonies. You want to show the work that you have. But also, you want to make sure that you unbox a couple of things. Um, your website should be very clear. You should have clear calls to action that are also hooked up to your, your marketing, right? So you want a call button. And then when you have your core, what's your core call to action, right? It should be an action oriented thing. It shouldn't just say contact me. It should say reduce your taxes now or schedule a consultation or take a step. It should be some action oriented, um, schedule a strategy call, right? And the idea is throughout your entire website, you need to have that call to action so that you show them where this relationship is going because really sales in all way shape or form particularly digitally it's about a relationship and you want to bring them through kind of the three stages of curiosity enlightenment and then commitment curiosity enlightenment commitment and just like when you were dating somebody before you got married you know when you first meet somebody it's all about hey how can you make my life better <laughs> like let's be frank are you attractive are you fun to be around can we enjoy each other and then you in then there's this enlightenment phase where you understand how they work Work to truly be worth the commitment and eventually you'll take that commitment right so the idea is your advertising is often it's gonna be like junk mail right when I go out to my I still can't believe people do print mail but when I go out to my mailbox I grab all my mail and I go shink shink shrink and I look through it and I'm looking for stuff that actually is meaningful for me. I'm looking for something that I'm actually interested in that will actually make my life better. So your website and your advertising shouldn't be about you. 
It needs to be about how you make their life better, which is all about their problems. And really what you want to do is you want to, so you're going to, you know, they're going to be in a curiosity mode. So you want to pique their curiosity about how you can really change their main problem, either helping them thrive or survive, either helping them do more of the good stuff or less of the bad stuff. Then you want to enlighten them as they lean into your website and they watch videos, they read white papers, they see customer temp testimonials, they're gonna see you exercise a little empathy and authority. You're gonna show them, hey, I know what it's like to have the problems that you have. In fact, here are more of the problems that we find. And then authority, having testimonials, reviews, photos, a little claim to fame, you know, maybe logos of the companies that you've helped, um, customer video testimonials, Google reviews, Facebook reviews, proof to show that you are doing, um, you are solving those problems. So empathy and authority as you, curiosity, enlightenment, and then eventually commitment. You got to remember that commitment costs them something. Your website needs to have kind of two levels of commitment. You have a transitional call to action or a transitional commitment where you can give away something, a lead generating magnet of some sort. We do webinars. We do a, a lot of like lead magnet style things within the website. You don't have to have webinar software. We will build you a website that just has that functionality. You come, you watch the bumper, they fill out the ad and boom, it goes to the splash screen that shows the webinar. We can do that and then sends them an email. Um, so the idea is that's what you're bringing them through, right? Your website needs to be built to convert, built to connect, to, to show that you understand the problems that they actually solve. There's a whole bunch of other things, but the main thing is clearly show what you do, how you make their life better, and then your value proposition, right? We should have ways the, uh, of showing what do they get when they choose you, right? So the idea is what are the benefits? Now, we don't want to talk about features of you and your benefits you want, or you and your your solution, you want to talk about the benefits that they'll experience. So a lot of times titles or a quick title or header with a quick explanation of what do they get? Hey, I'm going to help you focus on your business. I'm going to handle all your books for you. Or you're going to experience save time. You're going to save in your taxes. You're going to be able to build more wealth. You're going to experience um, less hairy legs. You're going to lose weight, whatever it is, right? So think of your value proposition. What are the benefits that they get? Then we want to sprinkle in a little bit of, that's like the flour and the sugar, by the way. Like the majority of your website needs to be talking about the benefits that they get by working with you, by choosing to work with you or choosing your solution, your product, or your service. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to show them a little bit of pinch of salt. And this pinch of salt is just a little bit of why should they work with you? We call it the stakes. There's a little section in all of your website that just kind of shows what are they, what's the pain they're avoiding by working with you? What pain are you saving them from? A lot of times this is framing up what like a low bid competition would be. What would the competition be like, right? So we want people to know. Um, so there's a couple points that we frame on that. Um, we're going to work on a one-liner with you. you. You need to work on a one-liner in order to have a website that actually converts. And the, the one-liner is all about how do you concisely in the immediate part of your website on the hero section, right when you get there, the splash section, the title and the image, how do you make sure that that very clearly states what you're in the business of providing and how you make their life better? And you want to think about like a caveman grunt. So if you do these things, you work with us, we'll help you do this. But if you do these things, sprinkled in with reviews and, and, and then there's the whole ranking thing, um, you'll have a website that ranks. That's the number one thing. And I'm telling you, it's super important. Here's the second thing with digital marketing that we're finding right now. Um, paid search ads are kind of the leading thing that will get people to your website and it's the most predictable. I don't necessarily like using Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or LinkedIn to get new business. I like those for something. I'm going to hit on that in a minute. But the primary thing that you need to understand are what are the queries and questions that a potential customer is going to grab their phone and search for, right? I'm looking for an accountant near me. The tax difference between an LLC and an S Corp. What's the difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance? Who is an insurance agent near me? I'm looking for a driveway seal coat near me. So what you do is you start lining up what are the most important search phrases that you need to be on. And then there's two ways that you get in front of people. It's going to be your website, but what you're going to find is Google and Bing, those search tools that you use, and it could be on YouTube as well. You have to work really hard over a long period of time 
for your content to rank organically. And that's called search engine optimization. You have to do create the right content and build it up in the right way. It's almost like building up its resume so that it would just rank for you, right? So the idea is it will just get organic traffic. If I search that, boom, you pop up. You didn't have to pay anything and that would be sweet. The problem is, is most of us small business owners are in sectors that are super competitive. Not only are they super competitive, but there's a whole world of third-party aggregators like Angie's List, Thumbtack, House, HomeAdvisor that are making it hard because they have super giant, helpful websites that rank organically. So when you search, you know, concrete contractor near me, you look for driveway concrete remodeler near me, you look for, um, you know, pipe fitters, welders, diesel mechanics, whatever it is. It's like you've got all the all this competition amongst your own competitors, and then you got these third-party snots taking up the click. So it gets really hard for you to control. SEO, search engine optimization, and winning organic traffic is super important, but it's unpredictable now. So in 2021, that's probably the main thing that I would let you know is that, you know, ultimately we want to rank and get free traffic but it's not very consistent. There's a couple problems with organic traffic too. It can change as soon as Google updates its algorithm. As soon as something happens in your business or on your website, maybe something goes ugly or haywire, it gets hacked by a Chinese hacker. This doesn't happen with our websites, but stuff can happen that cause you to fall out of good graces with Google. What is the most predictable way to get in front of people? And, and the idea is like, it's almost like you're fishing for leads. And if you wanna hook better leads, when you're in the boat, you want to put down a couple of excellent trolling lures, right? And the number one is to find out what are your core commercial take action keywords, right? So if you're a remodeler, it's kitchen remodeler near me, bathroom remodeler near me, bathroom remodeler, renovation companies near me, remodeling companies near me, remodelers near me, general contractors near me, builders near me, right? And I say near me, it's not always near me, but it, there, there's little variations of these core commercial keywords. Now these core commercial keywords are usually the most expensive keywords. So let me talk about Google ads and, and Bing ads. So the idea is, is you can use paid search advertising or SEM or search engine marketing. We're gonna do this organic thing, but we can make sure that we just pay to be the first people that pop up. Now, when you go to Google and you go to Bing, you'll see right at the top is usually one of two things. Either one, you have a normal Google ad. The Google ad would have a title with an explainer, maybe a couple little bars there, and then there'll be the second Google ad. That's paid search advertising. What happens is when pe you will create an ad, and the, here's how this works. We will go into Google ads and we will select a couple of keywords or key phrases or search terms. We can either be really stringent on that search term or be a little more broad on how, how specific we want it to be. Should it just be remodelers or should it be Burnsville remodelers or remodelers near me or kitchen remodelers, right? Um, or should it not have the word kitchen? So we can, we pick these keywords. Then what we do is we'll write a written ad and that written ad would pop up and then what you do is you give it a budget and then you have this landing page that you would drive people to. And what Google does is Google's going to, in the moment that search phrase in the location that you put it in is actually searched, a micro auction happens instantly between you and every other competitor that wants to be in on that. And what Google does is it, it, it synthesizes your budget with the keyword, with the written ad, with all the competitors, with your landing page, and it kind of comes up with this algorithm that makes sure the most relevant, helpful, good bid is accepted, right? So there's this kind of quality score thing between the keyword, with the ad, with the landing page, and then there's just the budget, right? Um, and you know, in web design, for example, my keywords are $40 a click for these core commercial keywords. I could spend $10,000 a month on AdWords like that, and some businesses do. You don't have to spend that much. Some industries are more competitive than others, but 
at the core of what you do, the most predictable way for you to get great leads, the first part is paid search advertising. Now, the reason why I like that the most, let's just say that you opened up an ad and you were a remodeling company and you said, remodelers near me, you have a compelling ad, you're paying to get in front of people, people are clicking on it and they're coming to your landing page. Now, a percentage of them are going to close. You know, if 90% of the traffic that comes to your website were to close, or even 75% would be, that would be a 25 or a 5% conversion rate where people actually took a step with you. That's huge, and that's a conversion. That would be making you a ton of money, right? But that means that a giant portion of them are not converting, and I'm gonna talk about what we do with those guys later because we can actually do something with them. Um, but the idea is, is people are going to, they're going to be shown your ad, like they make remodelers near me as a search, and then there's this impression share. Search impression share. There's actually a, a metric that we will measure to show how often were you in numbers one, uh, ad slot number one through three or on the bottom four, five, six, on the next page. How many times when someone searched were you in on an impression, which just means you showed up, right? That's called your search impression share. So people search, micro auction happens, then you have an opportunity to click you. The search impression share just shows how often were we in front of people when, it, when we look at all the searches in this area, what percentage of the time could you have been clicked on? That's search impression share. The next thing that you wanna take a look at is your click-through rate, right? So click share. So you have how often, you know, you look at how many times I showed up, then how many times did people actually click on my ad? And that's your, your click-through rate or your CTR. Not only is your click-through rate really good, but you can also look at the click share. Of all the clicks that occurred on this keyword in our region, wherever this is, what percentage of that click share? It's one of the, one of the most important things that I look at is impression share with click share, and then we look at how broad the keywords are, right? Um, so the reason why I'm telling you all this is ultimately our goal is to make sure that we're in on a high percentage of the market share to fill your funnel. Now, this depends on how many new customers you can actually take on. If you're at capacity, you know you wanna throttle this up and down. Um, but the foundation of excellent advertising is to make sure that you use these most predictable Google and Bing ads. Bing is relevant on Windows big time and it can be really inexpensive to use Bing, but I'm telling you, it's worth doing it. Um, and not only do you make sure that you use that paid search ad, but if you're a local business, we wanna add on your Google My Business, which is where your Google reviews are. And we add that on as what's called a location extension. And that just is another opportunity for you to get, get people there. Those paid search ads are going to create predictable good traffic. Then you have to tinker with your website and make sure it actually converts, right? That's kind of the first part that I always set up for small businesses. Depending on what your capacity and budget is, we will throttle that budget. And you spend anywhere between $5 a day, $20 a day, $150, $250 a day, $1,000 a day. It depends on how much traffic you need. Now, again, if you ran a 25% conversion rate, that would be sweet. And that's what I wanna do is I wanna talk about what makes a Google ad really good. Now, I already talked about there's this synthesis between the, Google looks at it and kind of grades it, right? What's your keyword? What kind of an ad did you write? What's the bidding and the auction between you and the competitors? And then what does your landing page look like? It actually digests all that. And that's how it applies your ability to actually win the auction, right? Now, there's also this whole thing where Google wants to know what are you looking to do? What's your goal in this ad? Because there are different types of goals. Most of the time, so you have a goal of just, I want clicks. Or maybe your goal is, I want to have impressions. I just want to show up as much as I possibly can. Or your goal could be, I want a target search impression rate. Here's a ton of budget, Google, go make sure I'm in front of half the searches. But what I found is the most important thing you have to do, or you can do what's called manual, and, and we do this a lot, where you will take each keyword, you'll say how much you'll pay for it, and then the idea is that you'll kind of throttle up and down. We do a lot of that. Um, but there's one super important part to make Google Ads much better, and that's that you have to hook up 
a conversion action, okay? So in Google Ads, you can use Google Tag Manager or other ways to say, when someone hits this phone call button or fills out this Calendly link or fills out this form, that's my actual conversion action. I want that, Google. I want to watch that, I want to monitor that. So when, I, when we set up Google Ads, and it's primarily me, when we set up Google Ads for our clients, um, not only are we creating excellent research strategic ads and bids and everything with fantastic landing pages, that's really what we're trying to do, but we're also gonna make sure that we hook up these conversion actions, because the conversion actions are really powerful because over time what you can do is you can optimize for that conversion action and you can optimize for a cost per conversion. Long story short, Google and Facebook both use machine learning to help their customers have more success on their platform. The fact of the matter is the minute a business is having success on the Google or Facebook platform, their spending goes up. I know that the second people start to see leads coming in, boom, they start spending like crazy. Google and Bing and Facebook understand that. So what they've done is, is they've put in machine learning or artificial intelligence to help over time run a scientific method to accomplish whatever goals you want. So what we do is we make sure that your conversion actions are set up right, cleanly, clearly, and what that'll do is it'll allow your ad to not only have this powerful situation over here, but Google will actually be a playmaker for you. And it will apply the algorithms differently depending on how likely that customer is going to act. Now, this is all based on the tracking codes that Google uses. We never know, but you gotta remember that Google and Facebook, they know, they know way more about us. All that creepy stuff they know about us gets applied in the machine learning. So it's running a scientific method. After it gets a certain number of conversions and you set up your ad to run for either a target cost per conversion or an actual conversion, there's kind of a couple different goals, what Google will say is, okay, what do I know is true about these the last 30 converters? Oh, they always go to Gander Mountain. They own a Ford truck and they, they eat here and they spend there and they use their phone this way. We don't know how Google actually does it, but what you will see is that over time, your ads will get significantly better. So if you like that setup, give us a call. But that whole setup is the most predictable way that you can create traction to your website. So one, you have a website that converts. Number two, you get this paid search. Now let's think about 85% of your traffic didn't do anything. Now what? Well, the cool thing is, is they're not totally missed opportunities. In fact, we know that if they search that keyword, they've, they have shown that they're a qualified prospect in some way, shape, or form. Now, they might not have budget. They might just be curious. They might be a competitor. They might be a student. A quick ad in those Google ads, you know, for web design, right? I have to take out certifications, classes, uh, degrees, universities, schools, jobs. Like you have to do this negative keyword work to make sure that you don't pop up on all these other types of searches. That's something that you have to manage over time. But um, what we can do is we can use what's called remarketing. So the way remarketing works is we use Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google and we install their tracking codes so that when people come to your website, we can make an audience. And so they would join this audience list, right? And this audience list, um, they can have parameters, right? You could say anybody who's been to my accounting website or landing page would belong to this list for anywhere between one day and 180 days on Facebook or 540 days on Google, right? So the idea is they come to your website and then you can make them part of these remarketing groups. And you can have audiences, there's a lot of ways to do this, but in principle, here's what we do. People will often do their research on Google one day, and then they sit down and they look at Facebook the next day and they just, if we can run Facebook ads, if we can run YouTube bumper ads, if we can run Google display ads, which will show up on blogs, and if we can run LinkedIn ads, you can do a combination of two things. One, you're gonna present this other opportunity for them to take action with you, right? Hey, looking to get your driveway seal coded? 
book now and get 20% off or whatever it is, right? And it's on Facebook or it's on LinkedIn or it's on Google or it's on YouTube. This is kind of this omnipresent remarketing. And the idea is if they've shown that they're interested in some way, shape or form or that they're qualified, now you better do that. And what you'll see is that your conversion rates start to go up. Not only that, but you'll also see that you can call them to action, but you can also just add value, right? So you can share articles. You can run articles to those groups of people. You can share videos to those groups of people. There's a lot of different things that you can do to help position yourself as an industry expert. Maybe you just help them, right? A lot of why I make these videos is because it makes my phone ring like crazy. This is the foundation of my business, this podcast, YouTube channel, and then I kind of, I don't put it on Facebook because, I don't know, Facebook is, makes me mad. Anyways, you should go up probably on Facebook. <laughs> I use it for remarketing. So what's weird is on the paid search ads on Google and Bing, you know, you could spend $50, $100 a day, $200 a day. And I'll, we could talk about how that works. But what's cool about remarketing is it's generally speaking for most small businesses, a pretty small group. So, you know, if you spend $15 a month, $5 a day, five on Facebook, five on LinkedIn, five on Google and Google and maybe five on YouTube, but that's tied to Google. Oftentimes you can really help stay in front of the people that hit your website. And that's super important. Now, all that being said, that's kind of your core thing that you'll want to do. There's another form of marketing that I think is really compelling where you would use display advertising, Facebook advertising, LinkedIn advertising to offer up some sort of really helpful thing that solves a problem for people. And it would be like a lead magnet, right? So it could be an article that you share. And when people get there, they have to exchange their email in order to actually um, read the article, right? And, and so the idea is you still have this curiosity, enlightenment and commitment, but the commitment is really about, hey, I'm really curious to know how much it would cost to put in a patio, right? Average patio costs and you run that to a neighborhood or, or in driveway or concrete or whatever it is. You run these ads on Facebook and even on Google, you can do Google paid search for something that's not a core commercial keyword. Maybe it's LLC versus S Corp, they hit that. And then you have this lead magnet. A lead magnet is in exchange for an email, I'll get some piece of information. And then the idea is you can email them, right? You don't wanna spam them. But what's interesting is even if people aren't clicking on your email, they're seeing the email in their inbox. Um, I tend to be a little more cynical of email marketing because there's so much spam out there. People are less excited about opening the email. But I tell you what, that's kind of the core of great advertising right now. Um, and then you have content creation, okay? so. Number one, paid search ads or paid SEM or just SEM in general, along with a high converting website, that's kind of the 80% the, the of what's gonna drive your, your, uh, it's your traffic, right? Then you have remarketing, that's a really powerful thing. And then you have content creation, okay? And the idea is, is if you create YouTube, if you create on TikTok, if you create on, and I think those two are probably the most compelling right now, if you do that, you have this opportunity to connect with people, to solve problems. And there's usually kind of two types of content. You have more like um, disruptive type content where you say hi to them, uh, you engage with them, you're funny, maybe you do dances, whatever it is. Um, and then you have kind of more search bound or problem focused, right? So I have a video called the, the tax difference between an LLC and an S Corp that gets tons of views and that drives lots of leads for my old accounting firm. Um, I also have <clears throat> like websites on how to hook up Google Analytics to Webflow because I specialize in that, how to do Google Ads for Webflow. And so you can create these more inbound pieces on your website, but then also on YouTube and people can find that, right? So in 2021, I know everybody's a YouTube star, or a TikTok star, or an Instagram star, but I'm telling you, if you take some time to invest in content creation, it's really great. It's really helpful. It'll, it'll do a couple of things. It'll get you in front of more people, but it'll also help close more sales because as people come to your website, they see you, maybe they click on Facebook, maybe they click on YouTube, they start to get to know who you are and you can show who you are. And if you're not the type of person that you want them to find you, um, get character flaws or whatever, fix those two. But um, usually it's good to actually connect with people. Um, in fact, I'm gonna make another video after this that talks about how important video is right now 
And uh, anyways, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, Instagram, I'm on TikTok now. I haven't created a ton of content, but we're all about the podcast right now. So if you're on the podcast, we'd really appreciate it if you'd um, rank this a five star, you know, the reviews really help drive it. Um, and let me know what kind of content you like. Shoot me a, shoot me a message, go to feedbackranch.com if you'd like to get set up with a website, paid search ads, whatever that is. Good luck, God bless, looking forward to connecting.